Hey guys, how you doing? So welcome to a new video. This one is going to be on photography. Start of a new playlist of videos, very short little um, punchy videos, basically just giving you some hints, tips, tricks, that sort of thing to help improve your photography. Uh, that's one of my sort of goals from the angler is to help people along with their photography. Uh, if you don't know, my name's Rob. Um, this is a fairly new channel and uh, I'm a professional photographer. So the angler is a project that I've started uh, this year, all on just basically trying to celebrate angling, bring um, bring the, the good things about angling to the forefront and uh, and celebrate this, this wonderful pastime that we've got. Uh, all too often people concentrate angling just on catching fish and it's, there's just so much more to angling for me uh, than catching fish and I want to celebrate that in the angler. Anyway, enough of the waffle, let's crack up in the video. So in this video I'm going to talk to you about some very quick tips on how to improve your catch shots and it doesn't matter whether you're shooting with a DSLR, whether you're shooting with a phone, however, you, however you're shooting your shots, use these little tips, I guarantee you you'll get better catch shots. Cheers all. Right, so the TLDR, if you haven't got time to watch the full video, is Use nature to help compose your shots, use nature to help frame your shots, and try and take away as much out of the shot that's not needed. That's the TLDR, so let's explore that a little bit. Let's explore the latter bit first. So taking things away from the photo that's not needed. Clients say to me, you know, that this is the image I want taken. They very often give me a brief and say, I want a photo of this or this or this, uh, of this scene, of this product or whatever, and I want it to portray this kind of feeling, or I want to celebrate this. You know, they give me a very clear directive of what they want out of their image. And it's my job as a photographer then to tell a story with that product or with that scene or with that, um, you know, expanse of land, whatever, whatever I'm taking a photo of. You're always trying to tell a story with a photo. Video is, is uh, essentially easier. You know, it's, it's, it's more difficult to get it. It's challenging to get it right, but it's, it's a little bit easier because you can incorporate a lot more things in a video and tell a story. You know, you've got a lot more... Um, tools at your disposal to tell a story with a video. With a, with a photo you haven't, you've just got one image and you have to tell that story with that one image. Um, so as a photographer I try and take away as much as I don't need out of the image as possible. I take away as much as I can in the composition of the shot and then when I'm editing I also do more. So for instance, um, you know, when I'm taking shots, uh, I'd take for instance like out of the fishing world, I took a shot up on the top of a skyscraper recently of a guy holding a camera and I took a shot of him and when I looked at the image it was a great shot but there was so much going on because it was at the top of the skyscraper there was vents and there was switches and there was all this sort of stuff it, it just looked too confusing so what I did in the editing I couldn't remove them things at the time but what I did in the editing stage was I took away all the switches the vents and stuff like that uh, most of them so we just had a couple of little bits you could tell where he was and then he was the focus because that was the idea of the photo so how can we sort of bring them sort of things into the fishing world? Well, when you're doing a trophy shot, you, you're essentially just telling a very simple story. I caught this fish. That's the story. I caught this fish and, um, and that is it. And that's what you want to portray in your photo. Now, you might, um, depending on where you caught the fish, you might want to incorporate some other bits into it. I'm thinking off the top of my head here, like if you caught a fish in an urban environment, you might want the story might be, I caught this fish, but in an urban environment, so inside your inside your photo, you would include you, the fish, and you would definitely concentrate on some background elements, whether it be graffiti on a wall or something like that. If you caught a fish in a canal setting, for instance, the story might be, I caught this fish on a canal, so you would include yourself, the fish, and then you might have a canal walk behind you or members of the public walking past or something like that. So you can always incorporate a couple of bits into your story, but you don't want to make it too complicated because the story's got to be quite simple in a photo, in my view, in my view. So um, let's, let's use an example of how it can be bad so what you know incorporating too many things into the shot you know you don't want to tell your story and say i caught this fish on this lake and this is the net i used which is lying on the floor this is the water i used to pour over the fish uh, that bin in the background there i used that a couple of times um oh but that's my bivy i slipped in i slept in the bivy and this is a tree that i like leaning up against you know and you've got so many things going on in the photo uh, i'm just using a, you know an over the top example here but all them things excuse me, all those things in a photo, you don't need it. You just need yourself, the fish and a nice background or no background at all, just completely blur it out. So that's essentially it. It's, um, it's, it's not a rocket science uh, tip. It's just, uh, yeah, so let, let, let's, let's bring that all together. So the tip is make your story very simple. Just include one or two elements to your photo on top of you with a fish. I would say a maximum of two elements. 
Um, and them elements could be, like I said already, the background, it could be a, a member of the family, if uh, your kid's fishing with you, you know, a lovely picture of you with a fish and your kid tells a wonderful story. Uh, or it could be your dog, you know, your faithful fishing companion. Um, just include a couple of bits along with you and the fish uh, and keep the story very simple. So that's your first tip. Right, second one we're going to move on to is um, going to give you a couple of composition um, uh, tips and, and where to put yourself in the background because I see all too often and it's not necessarily a bad thing it's just it's you know it's a bit ubiquitous you see it all the time you don't you, you want to not necessarily always do this when 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 people come up to me and they say can you take a photo of me with this fish please or whatever can you do a cat shot for me even before they know I'm a pro photographer they automatically well I say they most of the time they automatically put themselves up against a background and quite close to it so just say there's a reed bed or there's a a tall um, uh, canopy behind them or there's um, uh, sometimes even fences or if there's a you know a tree a bush or whatever they tend to put themselves right up against a background and and because they think you know it's they, they just want that background in the shot I would say to get away from that because I remember what I just said about the um, the story you want to tell unless you want to incorporate the background into your shot I would try and get far uh, far away from the background Therefore, in your, um, I won't go too much into it, but in focus planes, you're going to lose the background in the shot. And by lose it, I mean it's going to blur out. You won't be able to blur it out as much with a phone as you can with a DSLR. But if you're shooting with a DSLR, and I won't go into it now, but you know, a relatively um, wide aperture, so say, so let's say I would recommend shooting about f4 um people with phones obviously ignore that. But if you're shooting with a DSLR, I'd recommend doing your catch shots around f4. Um, with that, if you stand while away, if you stand a distance away from the background you're going to be able to throw the background out you're going to be able to sort of blur it out to a certain extent um, and then that's going to make your story a lot simpler and it's going to make it nice and punchy you the fish and then the background out of focus and that's going to be a nice shot um, so yeah so that's tip one on where to put yourself get yourself away from the background um, what I'm going to try and do now is show you a couple of example shots I'm going to take a picture of something you know I don't know a bottle of drink or something and I'll take a photo of it right up against the background and away from the background and I'll show you the difference between the two so there you go I took some photos with the camera and um, I took some photos with the uh, with the phone as well right what I'm going to try and do now is just um, show you I'm back at home so the sound is probably uh, slightly different but I'm on my laptop now so I can show you the difference so let's look at the camera first so this is a camera shot of um, right next to, I'm about, I don't know, half a metre away from, from these, uh, from the foliage in the background and you can see these areas are out of focus because I'm shooting with a really good quality camera and a good quality lens. Um, if you go on to picture two, which is about a metre or further away, you'll see a more exaggerated example of where this, where this out of, um, these out of focus areas is even more. You can kind of make out some twigs here on this picture but this is far away and you know all this is just melting into a, a gorgeous bokeh um bokeh you'll hear it a lot in the folk in the in the photographic world it just means out of focus areas basically um i'll go into that at a later date when i talk about all the different little bits of terminology you might want to learn um but yes yeah, so and then if you go even further away you'll see it melt into the background even further and um you know this is you know you can't really make out the background so if you were shooting a person with a fish here this would be a lovely shot you know you'd just be concentrating on the person holding the fish and the background would just melt away now to a certain extent you can do this with the phones so let's look at a phone this is a close-up picture using the phone iphone 11 and you can see there that's roughly where you'd crop it i suppose kind of there and you can tell everything around you so you can tell you can make out all these leaves you can tell exactly what that is you can tell all these branches and you can tell all these twigs you know you can tell exactly what it is so the the, the shot in my opinion would be very busy now if you bring up just standing a few meters away now you can still tell what this stuff is but if you zoom in you'll see that it's out of focus and all these all these branches are out of focus all the leaves are out of focus you can still tell what it is because obviously we're shooting with the phone here we're not shooting with a beautiful camera that i was in the other shots but you can see everything's out of focus if i put this next door to each other 
So these leaves here, or these leaves here, I think. Yeah, I believe so, or them there, but it's, it's around the same area. So if you look at the two difference between that and that, out of focus, in focus. So this is gonna melt away. I mean, it's not gonna melt away, like I said, as much as it would with a camera, but it's certainly gonna do its job. And what this means is you just get a nice, a much more pleasing image. So if we look at the two images, one after another, that's the one close up and the one further away. And if you look at the, if you just concentrate on the, the milk carton in this shot and just look how clear it is and then look at it now, you'll see it stands out a lot better. And that's because all this area here is out of focus. So it looks very sharp for a phone shot. It looks very sharp all around there. And that's just going to make you stand out in the photo holding the fish or the person you're taking the picture of. Now, just to show you that you can go too far with this, I took one from quite far away and I would say that's too busy, personally. All these areas here are out of focus and they are making, I think I slightly missed focus with the phone, I probably didn't tap on the subject, but it, it, it's, it's telling you what, it, what, it, what I needed it to tell you and that's basically you can go too far and incorporate too much into the image. Even if you were standing there with a the fish, I personally think this would be a bit too busy. There's too much of the background going on. You can see the pathway coming down here. You know, you can see stuff in the front. I think this would be a little bit too busy. For me, the ideal th distance for a phone shot is here. And you would see just enough of the background and it's out of focus to make the image clear. And that's the best you can do with a, with a phone. If you were shooting with a camera, this is um, the shot from uh, about two meters away from the background. There's about two meters away from uh, two meters away from the foreground of the background, and I think that's about perfect. Personally, as well, you still get a lo you get a lovely, you know, the, the background melts away it beautifully. You can see exactly what is in the frame in the foreground. It's nice and clear and sharp, and the f the picture is uh, is nice and simple. And that's what I'm looking for in the shots. So hopefully that helped you. Right, let's move on to the last tip of this video, which is going to be just a few composition tips on where to put yourself, not just necessarily up, right up against a, or, you know, far away from a tree. Um, let's tell you a few little composition tricks that I use as a photographer and that might help you get some better shots. Okay, we're going mobile now. So this is your next tip. And uh, this is a bit of a composition trick here. So there's lots of composition tricks you can use in photography. And one of them is called framing. And you'll see it an awful lot when you watch... Um, films you know directors and uh, cameramen all, all different people use this this trick and they they will use natural elements or man-made elements so like uh, door frames and stuff like that to actually frame the person you'll see it like i say a lot in films in fishing we can use it because you'll see here this has got a nice if i can do it with my finger you've got a nice oval canopy here and that happens a lot with um with a uh, uh areas that have got trees on one side and trees on the other side and you get this natural kind of frame so you'll see there if you can imagine a cat shot from this low with the person here with the fish you'll get some lovely framing of the uh, of the pathway around it and also if you shot it right you could actually include some of the pathway and that'd be a second great compositional element which is called leading lines you can use the lines of the pathway to kind of converge in on the person holding the fish and you could get a really nice shot if i was shooting this shot i would i wouldn't actually shoot the person mega tight i would put them a little bit further away and then i could incorporate the lines of the path and i could incorporate the framing going around and it'd be a really nice shot so yeah so you can incorporate some you can incorporate some natural framing from the uh from the foliage and the trees and you could also incorporate some leading lines with pathways Another natural frame you'll always find, if I walk on to the next swim, is swims are always naturally framed. You'll see there, you've got some trees here, and you've got some trees here, and then you've got a nice gap in the middle. So if you were taking a shot down low, you could put the person in the middle of the frame with the fish, and then you've got a nice framing from the trees on either side. That would be a lovely, a lovely shot. And you've got some great distance between yourself and the background there so all this elements here would be out of focus and you'd be nice and sharp there with yourself in the middle of the frame uh, let's see if we can find something else um, can't see anything obvious in front of me 
I think two tips is good for now, isn't it? Yeah, two tips is good for now. There's other tips you can use in composition, like uh, the rule of thirds and things like that. And um, maybe I'll talk about them in the next, in the next uh, video. So there you go, a couple of compositional elements for you. Use um, just to summarize. So let's actually, let's summarize the whole thing all together, shall we? So the tips we talked about with regards to getting better cap shots. Get yourself some distance away from the, um, the background. If you're using a phone, I'd recommend getting about three meters. If you're using a DSLR, shooting at about F4, F5, I'd recommend about two meters. And that is, this is all ideally, you know, I know sometimes swims are tight and you can't always go where you want to. And sometimes, you know, you can't, um, you've got lots of things going on with the background, busy places. These are ideal scenarios, but do what you can. Um, so yeah, so that get yourself away from the background. Um, and then the second compositional elements, try to use, um, if you've got them, some natural elements to frame the image. So. Again, always possible if you can try and get some trees or some foliage or some bushes or some you know um, just anything that naturally frames the image that's can, that can uh, make a shot nice. Um, if you've got some pathways um, or maybe even just the way the grass is cut or something, you might be able to find a leading line there where you can use them leading lines to lead the person viewing the image onto what's important, i.e. you holding the fish. Um, you can use swims, swims are great because normally swims are cut square, aren't they? So it's just gonna be a natural frame. So you can use a, you can use a swim and the, the framing of the swim to, uh, to, uh, to frame the shot. How many times did I say frame there? Um, so there you go, so there's some tips. Hopefully they're, they're, um, they're helpful for you. In further videos as I go forward, I'll incorporate some other compositional elements like rule of thirds and we'll do some sort of backlighting and some real advanced stuff to help you get real nice shots um, and we'll talk about you know getting better shots with phones and getting better shots with um, with uh, DSLRs I incorporate both uh, I'll touch on some video as well uh, and what I will I'll concentrate a lot on because I get loads of questions as soon as people find out I'm a professional photographer they want to know how I do self takes uh, the TLDR to that is I don't do a lot of self takes obviously I just do video nowadays but I can do a decent self take if I need to so um, I'll talk you through how to do a, a, a great self take shot both on photos uh, both on phones and on cameras so thanks very much for watching the video I hope that was helpful for you I'd love to hear your comments down below let me know if you enjoyed it this is one of my first um, videos so I'd really like to know how you find it um i'm concentrating on pumping out uh, pumping out videos a bit quicker and not necessarily concentrating on fantastic quality and um fantastic uh production value because then i can pump out these videos quicker i'm shooting this now on my iphone 11 and i'm about to edit it on my iphone as well and then um, upload it so um, i'm not going to concentrate too much on production quality at the moment just going to pump out some videos find my feet and then you know who knows from there where we'll go um, i'd love to get a cameraman and then i can improve the quality but we'll see anyway so thanks very much all hope you have a nice week uh, whatever you're doing and um yeah hit us up in the comments down below take care bye